you. Thank you. Well, we're in the uh, Advent season, which basically means, as Marcia so, so uh, described here at the beginning of the service, which may, means Advent means he's coming. He's coming. Get ready. And so I've been talking about hope, and I've been talking about peace, and I want to speak to you this morning about God's Christmas gifts to us at Christmas this season. And this morning I want to speak to you that Jesus came to give us joy. Not just any joy, awesome joy that he came to give us. And so I want you to share with, I want to share with you a few thoughts this morning. What is joy? I understand it's a dishwashing liquid. <laughs> we know that. Mm -hmm. And other things perhaps are named joy that I don't know about, but I'm talking about the genuine experience of personal joy. It is different than happiness. Happiness depends upon happenstance, depends upon circumstance. Joy, on the other hand, is something that we have. It's kind of a part of our God's operating system that we have within our, with our own hearts. Joy is what you have when you have the strength of God to face anything. No matter what the circumstances, God's blessings are still there in your own heart. That is joy. It means that you are less stressed in everything because you know God's love is in your own heart. This is the season of stress. You know that. I hear that a lot from people. They are stressed. But really what we have available to us in this season is we have joy. You see, joy does not come from what you have. And I want you to pay attention to this. Joy comes from what you know cannot be taken from you. That's where joy comes from. What you know cannot be taken from you. They can take your job, but they cannot take God's purpose for your life. They can take a relationship from you, but they cannot take God's love from your life. So you can have joy no matter what. They can take your health, but they cannot take God's grace away from you. They can even take your life, but they can't take God's promise of eternal life from you. Joy is there no matter what. This is, what, this is why the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, read this with me, all right, here we go. Always be joyful. Give it to me again. Always be joyful. Yeah, that's a good scripture to memorize. For one thing, it's only three words. See, that helps. Makes it easier. Always be joyful. I mean, I, there is a part of me that says I, I would rather it be two words. It just be joyful. But it says always? We, I mean, always? Seriously? And the answer is yes. Yes, that's exactly right. Always be joyful. Hmm. The truth is, and you know this, the truth is that if you're waiting for the perfect circumstances to experience joy, you're going to wait a long time, long time, waiting for perfect circumstances. And in those occasions when everything is perfect, you know it's only perfect for about 60 seconds, and then it kind of begins to deteriorate on you. So, how do you find the kind of joy that lasts through the hard times? Hmm? How do you find that? that lasts in this imperfect, often ugly world. The message of Christmas is that God came to bring joy to just exactly that kind of world, this messy, ugly world, the world in which we live, you know, with all the stuff that goes on, all the stuff. I go down, I see, go down to Arden Fair, see, and I see people walking around, Happiest time of the year, music is playing. People look like they're shell-shocked, <laughs> see? So whatever they're selling there, which is supposed to bring joy, 
These people are not experiencing it. They are not experiencing it. So where does joy come from? Well, I'm going to look at the people of the first Christmas. Because those people at this first Christmas all had joy at the first Christmas. The shepherds, they had joy. The wise men, they talked about joy. Mary and Joseph, they had joy. And it's not just for them. Because the joy that they experienced is the joy for us as well. Read this with me. Let's, let's, let's start out with building a foundation here. Read this with me. Everything written in the Scriptures was written to teach us in order that we might have hope through the patience and encouragement with the Scriptures give us. Romans 15, 4. You need to remember that. Everything that was written in the Scriptures was written to teach us in order that we might have hope through the patience and encouragement with the Scripture. Well, what does that mean? It means that whenever you read the Bible, it's not just written about them, the characters in the Bible. It is written for us. It's written for me. It's written for you. And the reason it's written in there is it's written to give me hope, to give you hope, to give us hope, to give us encouragement. It's written to give us joy, everything. So the question for you today is how do you find this joy? And so I have here five absolutely shocking truths that bring you joy. Shocking truths that bring you joy. And they're not how we usually think about joy coming into our lives. These truths are given to us by those people who first experienced Christmas at that first Christmas. This first shocking truth is from the shepherds. And it is this, number one, joy is here. This is what the shepherds teach us. Joy is here. And I've got to tell you, you know, if joy is going to happen in my life, it's got to be on the you are here spot. I want it to be where I am. Okay? I don't want it to be like it is over at the mall, where you look at the directory, and you finally find the spot that says you are here, and then the rest of it just goes out in all directions. And I don't want to find that joy is out over there somewhere. I want it to be right where I am. And the fact is that the shepherds discovered joy was right exactly where they were. Let's read this together. You're familiar with this. It doesn't hurt. Here we go. All together. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory showed, surrounded them. It's another night as usual for the shepherds. I don't know how much experience you've had with sheep, but I can tell you right off the bat, just based on what I've seen, that sheep, even when they are wide awake, are just not that exciting. They're just not, see? When they are asleep, they are even less so. So they're sitting there, and they're looking out at the field, and they see these white lumps out there in the darkness, and it is a boring, boring job. So they're watching these white lumps, and they're just, you know, kind of in a daze. You know how we are. Kind of like when we're watching television all the time, kind of, hmm. And suddenly, all of a sudden, in the middle of that life, this boring, routine, business-as-usual life these shepherds are experiencing, God shows up. Bang! Just like that. Because it tells us. Joy shows up in the middle of that kind of boring, pointless life that these shepherds were leading. And that's exactly where God shows up for you and me. So there's great hope when I look at the shepherds. God can show up in your life. He can show up in my life, where we are, and give us genuine joy. Listen, you do not have to go on vacation to find joy. See, the problem is that on vacation, you take with you the one thing that keeps joy away from you. You. You take you along. <laughs> See? 
And when you take you along, you also find out that you have taken with you the person who is stressed, the one that is, has the attitude that creates a barrier to joy. I mean, you're all there on this vacation. You don't have to leave your job to find joy. You don't have to, you don't have to leave your family to find joy. We're the ones that are stressed. We're the ones with the attitude that creates barriers in our lives for joy. One of my favorite words in the Christmas story is in this couple of verses that we just read here. Because it says, suddenly, suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. I love that word. Suddenly. They weren't praying about it. They weren't thinking about it. They weren't expecting it. Just suddenly, there he was. Okay. God shows up. Now, you know, we know, we know about the word suddenly. We get some news suddenly. Something can happen. Everything changes. And it gets worse. Suddenly. Suddenly you get the phone call. Suddenly you get the diagnosis. Suddenly there's an accident. And everything changes for the wor worse. But the fact is, and the truth is, that suddenly everything can change for the joy in our lives. You see? Everything can change for the better. Right here, right now, suddenly God can do something new in you. Hmm. I can begin to look at life differently. I can see that there's hope. I can begin to see that God's love is there no matter what the circumstances are. No matter who's doing this, I can see that God's love is still there. God can show up and give me joy. Suddenly, He can do this. Because joy is not about circumstances. It's about God suddenly showing up in my life. Joy is where? Here. You guys wake out there? <laughs> Just checking. All right. The second shocking truth from the shepherds as well is that joy is sent. It is sent. It's something that God sends into your life. He sent it to the shepherds. He's just as eager to send it to you. Just as eager. Let's read this from Luke. Here we go. It's going to be a couple of slides here. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Oh, yeah. Wow. Joy is here, obviously. How do I find it? Well, how does it come into my life? You know, the story is wonderful, but how does it happen to me? That's the question. Well, people develop a lot of different strategies for making this happen within their own heart and their own life. See, a lot of people will think that they will find this joy, this satisfaction in their own life if they will just work harder, work harder. Some people just believe that if they can just get everything done, they will find joy. On this basis, the most joyful people would be workaholics. And we know that isn't true. Mainly, they're just annoying, you know, <laughs> mainly. Some people think that if I can just ignore all of the bad things in the world, if I can just pretend it's not there, those bad things, then I can be joyful. But such people are not joyful. They are just unaware, you know. Joy is recognizing in the realities of life that God is here. God is here. God wants to bring joy into every one of our lives, and he sends it into every one of our lives. It's not found. You don't find it. You see, it's sent. 
It's sent to you. It has your name on it. The angel said to the shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy for all peoples. That includes us. Christmas, when you get right down to it, really is personal. Okay? Jesus came for you. Joy is sent into your life. And notice what these shepherds did when they went and saw the child. They did what the angel told them to do. Read it with me. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. They were what? Astonished. You don't sound astonished. Were they what? Astonished. Yeah, they were astonished. Mm -hmm. And so what did they do? Well, they went and they told other people about it. And you, and you notice how people responded. It says they were what? That's right, because the world and people need good news. People de need good news. That's why they are astonished that there was any good news. Joy is here. See? Joy is sent into our lives. And then from the wise men, we learn the third shocking truth. Number three, joy is a journey. A journey. Joy is a process of life. It doesn't always happen in an instant like we want it to. I mean, it may show up suddenly, but it takes us a while to even get used to the idea. These wise men, we know, they started in the east. You might remember the story, I hope you do. It says they saw this star that indicated to them that a king was being born. And they left, and they made this journey. And it says, when they arrived at Bethlehem, they see the star again. And read this with me. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Yeah, it's a journey. Now, the Bible makes it clear that this is how joy happens for every one of us. It says in Psalms 30, verse 3, read with me. Crying may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah. So it starts with tears. There is no doubt, you see, in our lives as we go through the circumstances of life. And Jesus himself taught about this. He said in John, the 16th chapter, the 20th verse, read it with me. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Yeah, yeah. That's the promise. That's the promise. And in Psalms 148, 13, here you go, read with me. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heavens. Yeah, hallelujah indeed. Christmas, Christmas, Emmanuel. We just sang the chorus this morning, Emmanuel means God with us. It still goes on. Manny Guido down here is named Emmanuel. That's what he's named. His, voice, his real name, Manuel, we call him Manny, but it comes from Emmanuel. God with us. Hold it over his head, Rose. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> it means God is with us. He is with you, whatever you're facing right now. The joy of the journey. Hmm. There's a fourth truth about joy, and we learn this fourth one from a little known person in the Christmas story. His name is Simeon, and it's probably the most shocking truth of all of these shocking truths, the most shocking truth about joy. Number four, joy is scary. Scary, frightening, scary. Well, that doesn't seem right, but it is. You see, this Simeon, this person we're going to talk about right now, we don't know him as well as we do the other characters in the Christmas story. 
But listen to what Simeon says at the dedication of Jesus. They take Jesus to the temple for the dedication, and Simeon, who works there in the temple, is a priest there. He recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah. And here is what he had to say. He said, Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall. But he will be a joy to many others. It's kind of ominous, see? And as we see the story of Jesus' life play out, we discover what it meant. The people who fell were those in great power. King Herod fell. The religious leaders fell. The Pharisees fell. But it was the people that recognized that Jesus came to give them something they had never had. Those people, those are the people who found great joy. You know, we need to realize, you and I, we need to realize that sometimes the scary thing about joy is that you have to let go of the thing that you're holding on to. We nearly all are hanging on to something. While it may not bring us joy, we feel secure with it. So we hang on to it, you know. The thing that you thought would give you joy, you need to let it go. But it's scary. And I, I don't know a better way to picture this than to picture that you're hanging on the side of a cliff, hanging onto a branch or something, you know, hanging, dangling over what apparently are thousands of feet with big rocks at the bottom. And you're just hanging out there in midair. You have a pretty good grip on that branch, you see. And you're hanging on for dear life to the one thing that you think is saving your life. And whatever it is, it may be anything in your life. You believe it's going to bring you joy. It may be your family, it may be your career, it may be drugs that you take, it may be alcohol. It may be any of those things, see. Whatever it is. And then here comes Jesus. And Jesus says to you, he throws you a rope, and he says to you, grab on, I want to give you joy. <laughs> but to grab on, you've got to let go. See? And that's the scary moment. So the question is, for yourself, what is your branch? What are you hanging on to that you cannot let go of in order to be rescued by God's love for you. What is it? Hmm? What's that thing that you're holding on to for dear life, hoping it's going to bring you joy and rescue you? We're, we're a lot like, we're all gamblers in this sense, you see. We believe that one more pull of the lever, one more roll of the dive, maybe I'll get joy, maybe I'll get joy this time, just this time. And the truth is that none of these things were ever meant to give you joy. You're meant to receive joy from your relationship with God. That's how you're meant to receive it. And you face that scary moment. Truth number five about joy. And this one we learned from Mary, Jesus' mother. And when you look closely at Mary's story, you find out this truth. Number five. Joy is a difficult decision. Difficult decision. Mary had a great joy. She sang an entire song about it, you know, over there. You can read it in Luke, the first chapter. Let me just read you a couple of verses of it. This was Mary's song about it. Mary responded, oh, my, oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will cause me call me blessed. Mary's got joy, see. But it wasn't always like that, see. It wasn't always something she wanted to sing about. This is not where she started in the singing of this song. It was a decision that she made that got her here. Okay? It says for us in Luke, the first chapter, the 29th verse, here was that moment of decision, 
Read with me. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. So I want you to circle three words there in that passage, okay? Yeah, find your outline. It must be there somewhere. Circle confused, circle disturbed, and circle afraid. I'm sure that she had some things questioned, you know. She was going to have a baby. She had never had uh, sex with anyone. And she didn't know how she was going to explain this to people or what she was going to tell her dad. This is going to be tough. See? She's confused, disturbed, and afraid. And then just a few verses later, she's joyful. Just a few verses. She made a decision. It was not a simple decision. It was a difficult decision. She decided to trust God instead of trusting herself. The thing about joy is, it often scares you at first. Because you've got to let go of what is familiar, you see, and make this decision to trust God instead of trusting yourself. Jesus is our example. He does this. He did this himself. He decided to trust the will of the Father so that he could experience this joy. So we look at this verse. Read it with me from Hebrews. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. His humanity did not want him. He did not want to be crucified in that manner. See? He was facing difficult decisions himself. You see? But he decided for joy. And he decided that he would trust the Father rather than trust what his body, his human body, was telling him. In fact, Jesus teaches us that he wants us to experience this same joy. And that night before he talks to his disciples, he said this. Read this with me. It's last words almost to them. I have told you these things so that you can have the same joy I have, so that your joy will be the fullest possible joy. That is his desire for us. He tells these things for us. Well, here's... Here's the thing. He's working to do that in your life. He wants to bring you this joy, this freedom in your own life. So we have to take a look at these first people at this first Christmas. I can take that first step, you know, of realizing that God is with me. I can let go of that branch. See, I can make the difficult decision to trust God instead of trusting myself, you can too. The truth is, you can choose to be a discouraged person the rest of your life. There's a lot in this world to be discouraged about. You can choose to be an angry person the rest of your life. There's a lot to be angry about in this world. You can choose to be a bitter person you could choose to be a cynical person for the rest of your life. There's a lot here in this fallen world to be bitter and cynical about. But the story of Christmas, the good news of Christ, is that you can choose. You can choose to be a joyful person because there's a lot to be joyful about as well. A lot to be joyful about. Let's bow our heads, would you please? This choice you can make right now, the choice that you just want to be connected to him, we're going to talk to him right now. Now, some of you, this is the first time you're praying a prayer like this. And I just encourage you to, to make this difficult decision to trust God rather than trusting yourself. So what you say in prayer right at this moment is, God, I'm trusting you. With even the wrong things I have done, I need your forgiveness. I'm trusting you to forgive me instead of trusting myself to somehow make it all better and make it all right. I'm trusting you 
to guide me rather than trusting myself to figure it all out. You've made me for a life, dear Lord. You've made me, guide me into that life. And for all of us that are here this morning, I just encourage you to pray right now. Lord, I want to experience your joy this Christmas. So whether it's taking the first step on the journey or recognizing suddenly that you're here right now, I'm looking to you to find joy. I'm looking to you like I never have before. Thank you for the joy that you came to give us, Jesus. In your name, I thank you. Amen. amen. And amen.